Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Uh, again, apologies on video delays. I've been running around uh, for work. I was in Toronto for a few days. Things got a little crazy. So I'm going to pick up very soon on the 4K reviews again. I have a few titles that I want to get out there. But while I was away, I had an interesting comment come in from a uh, viewer, Tim Moncrief, and he basically said, hey, I'm hearing a lot on my Facebook group that he runs about uh, sort of home theater uh, equipment and 4K Blu-ray collecting and all that stuff. It, it encompasses everything. He runs a few different groups. And he said, you know, a lot of people are asking about aspect ratios. And so he saw my video about kind of 4K and older movies and how the conversion works. He saw my video about HDR and that format war that's going on. And he said, hey, this might be a great topic. And it is actually something that I know a lot about. And so it's an easy video for me to jump into and sort of explain different aspect ratios. Now, the aspect ratio is the way that an image uh, displays on your screen, right? And it's also the, the ratio of your screen. So you could have an, a screen with a certain aspect ratio and you can have a disc with a certain aspect ratio. I'll get into that. But basically the question that comes up a lot from people is, hey, you know, why is my movie letterboxed? Why am I only viewing it in a square? Why are there black bars on the left and the right? We'll talk about that. Why are there black bars on the top and the bottom? I'm buying a Blu-ray, I want full picture. Uh, it should be 1080p, right? Why are there bars on the top and the bottom of my screen? Why isn't it filling my screen? Um, why do I have very small bars or very big black bars? There's all kinds of different things going on and ultimately it all comes down to the way that the director and the cinematographer wanted to shoot their movie. Uh, and so I'll kind of explain what to look for, how to know uh, which aspect ratios are going to fit your preference the most. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but you can keep an eye out for movies uh, that do have certain things like IMAX sequences. There's a lot of controversy with the new Avengers movie that there won't be IMAX sequences. Now, how can you tell if a movie that did get released in IMAX has that aspect ratio and will show IMAX? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some movies that do do that um, and some things you can look for when buying movies and displays um, for computers, TVs, whatever, when it comes to aspect ratio. So I'm just going to jump into it with basically an explanation of the standard aspect ratios. And again, I'm going to try to include images here as I go, overlaid on top of the video so that you can get a better feel for what I'm talking about. Now, your, your two basic aspect ratios when it comes to screens are going to be 4.3 and 16.9. Now, 4.3 that's your old school TV. That's the old square, no widescreen, uh, it, not typically HD, although you can shoot HD video at that aspect ratio. Grand Budapest Hotel is an example of that, but it's not widescreen. So you can have HD, but not have a widescreen aspect ratio. You're in a square box. This is typically how a lot of older TV shows will show up on uh, Blu-ray or DVD, especially if they haven't been remastered. You'll see that on Netflix sometimes with older TV shows. If you bought a DVD box set of an older TV show, if they haven't remastered it, it's probably going to display in that 4.3 format. Then you have 16.9. Now this is your standard 1080p widescreen TV. 99% of the TV market is going to be 16.9. It's 1920 by 1080, full HD, and that's your aspect ratio. If you're watching TV in HD, that's what's going to fill your screen. It's going to be in the 16.9 format. Most broadcast television is shot in that format and presented that way. So that's why when you're watching TV or even watching like TV shows on Netflix, it's typically going to fill your screen. You have the same aspect ratio. They're basically shooting the TV shows to fit your television and look great. That's where the question comes in, right? You have a 16.9 TV. Why aren't my movies showing on the full screen? We'll get into that. The other option you do have, there are some crazy aspect ratios, but there are also some 21.9 aspect ratio uh, displays, mostly computer monitors for gaming, but there are some that are getting into TVs, and those are ultra widescreen. Those are the same, essentially the same. You're off by a little tiny bit, but essentially the same as a widescreen theater would show um, a widescreen movie, an anamorphic widescreen movie would be shown 
at a similar aspect ratio. And so if you do buy one of those screens or you go and get a projector screen that's a 21 to nine projector screen, that is going to fill your screen and it's also going to have the right aspect ratio, the right length to width that's gonna show a complete display of these you know, widescreen movies. With a 21 to nine monitor, you're going to see more of that image than you would on a 16.9 and definitely on a 4.3 because of cropping. So there's sort of your displays. You either got a 4.3 and you're still living in 1990 with a 4.3 square TV. Lots of people still have them. That would be fine for uh, you know a standard DVD that's not widescreen or standard HD television, but almost nobody broadcasts in that aspect ratio anymore unless it's a rebroadcast of an older show. Then you have 16.9. That's your standard HD TV format. And then you have 21 to nine, which is your widescreen. Now, when it comes to movies, there are a lot of different aspect ratios and they go by a little bit of a different um, name and different, there's different math to it. So we'll start with 4.3. That's your letterboxed square image, right? I have an example here of a Blu-ray HD, but it is a 4.3 image and that is it the original TV miniseries, because this was on TV in the early 90s, um, 1990 to be exact, this was shot and presented in that 4.3 square format. Now, if you look on the back of the disc, it's going to say 1080p high definition, four by three, and then it'll give you a number, 1.33 to one. Now that's the uh, basically conversion of it, it, it's kind of confusing because there's two different names for the same thing. But when it comes to movies, they go by the scale of 1.33 to 1 or 1.78 to 1 or 2.4 to 1. And they use a different ratio. It makes more sense when you get into larger movies. But this is essentially a 4.3. So you're going to buy this. It's a Blu-ray. You may be expecting, oh, this is going to fill my screen. It's going to look great. It's not the case. If you look on the back of a lot of Blu-rays... Um, Right where above where it says special features, it says main features. This is where you also find information about the audio track. It's going to tell you most times what the aspect ratio is. And so you won't have any surprise when you go to buy it and it's squared off on your screen. You should have known that by buying it, especially because of the format and the age and the fact that it's a TV miniseries. This is still an HD. It's still an HD image. This is where people get confused. It's an HD image, high definition, 1080 image but it's presented in a 4-3 aspect ratio so that's a little confusing but that's a good example of that now your standard format for tv is 16-9 a lot of movies don't use that standard but there are some examples for example here i have train to busan this is a great zombie film from korea if you haven't seen it it's awesome i highly recommend it if i look on the back though again in the tech specs down here at the bottom it says 16.9 widescreen. So what that tells you is that this is going to fill your entire display. If you have a standard HD TV or 4K TV, they're all going to be 16.9, 1920 by 1080. And if it's a 16.9 widescreen presentation, you have no black bars. This fills your screen completely. That's something to look for. You will see that a lot on TV shows. Um, think stuff from HBO. If you buy an HBO Blu-ray, Game of Thrones, that's going to fill your screen because that's the way it was shot. Some movies do that, but more likely than not, you'll see this for TV. Now, another Hollywood sort of standard format is the aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1. Now, if we're going to talk about 16.9, that is 1.78 to 1 for reference. And so we're very close to 1.85 to 1, which is the standard for most new movies. For example, Justice League. If I look on the back here, this is a 4K version, but it still says 2160p Ultra HD, 16 by 9, which means it's going to fit your widescreen, but it's in 1.85 to 1, meaning you're going to have very, very, very skinny black bars on the top and bottom of your screen. So small that you may not notice them, but it's not going to completely fill it because this aspect ratio is built for a theater, which is just a little bit wider. A theater screen is a little bit wider, standard theater, not IMAX, a little wider than your TV. And so this gets stretched a tiny bit 
which means your vertical viewing space is decreased just a tiny bit. You'll see a little black bar. So lots of movies nowadays are shot in that 1.85 to 1. That's what you'll see in a lot of stuff. And it gives you a very, very slight black bar on top and bottom. You probably won't even notice it. It looks like it fills your screen. But that is something to note that Hollywood movies are shot not for your standard HD TV. And so a lot of times there's just a minimal amount of stretching that has to go on. Now, another very popular um, aspect ratio that I'm gonna pull up here and give you another example is uh, 2.4 to one. Now, something like Mad Max Fury Road, 2.4 to one is a widescreen format. This is what would fill your 21 to nine screen if you had that. It's going to stretch and on a regular 16 to nine screen, you're going to get pretty significant black bars on the top and bottom of your image. Now, the interesting thing is Hollywood releases these movies as 2.39 to one. That's usually the original aspect ratio. And then for the 4K or Blu-ray release, they go to 2.4 to one. Now, I don't really know why they do that. I'd be interested if you guys know. It's, it's literally off by, you know, one-tenth but they make that change whatever, for whatever reason. Usually they don't do 2.39 to one, they do 2.4 to one for the home release, which is what Mad Max is. So again, regardless of 1080, 2160, 4K, 2K, whatever you've got, this image is going to stretch the screen so it's gonna be a skinnier, wider image with black bars on the top and the bottom of your screen, pretty significant. Now the interesting thing is when you get into movies that play around with IMAX, right? So a great example here um, is The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight on 4K includes the IMAX visuals. So most of The Dark Knight, or majority of it, is shot in that 2.4 to 1. Widescreen format, black bars on top and bottom, pretty heavy, you know, doesn't completely fill your screen. The interesting thing is with movies like this, and I believe Interstellar does this, and this is essentially what we want the Avengers movies to do, Infinity War and Endgame, but Disney is not doing, is that when there is a scene in The Dark Knight which is shot in IMAX, IMAX is a much bigger format. It's taller and it's wider. And so what The Dark Knight disc does is it then stretches your image as wide as it can get, as tall as it can get, and it fills your entire screen. And so you'll notice while watching The Dark Knight There'll be some sequences where you have this widescreen image, black bars on the top and the bottom of your screen, not completely filling it, and then they'll shoot to another image, and all of a sudden, boom, it expands, and your entire screen is full. That's the IMAX experience. It's, you know, not actually an IMAX experience, but it does give you that feel. It gives you that IMAX feel. It gives you the full image. Um, you're not getting exactly everything, that came with the IMAX because you don't have an IMAX screen in your house, but it does stretch to give you that sort of illusion and gives you all that extra information um, in the, 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 you know, the background of the IMAX images, which you're not going to see otherwise. A great example of that is I've got some images here, which I'm going to throw up that show you the difference in a couple of Marvel movies where you're watching in an IMAX versus you're watching it in the standard 2.39 or 2.4 format. The amount of data that you're missing by not expanding into IMAX. Some scenes it may be insignificant, but for some scenes it does add extra information to the image as the directors intended. And so that'd be really great to get on a disc. We get it on the Dark Knight, but we're not getting it on the Avengers discs. Really disappointing. So the other thing to look out for is that there are some odd aspect ratios out there. I've kind of covered the majority of the, um, the big ones. You've got your 16.9, your 1.78 to 1. You've got your 4.3, your 1.33 to 1. You've got your uh, 1.85 to 1, which is just a slight widescreen. And you've got your 2.4 to 1, which is an anamorphic widescreen with black bars. Now, while doing research for this, I was looking through my movies, looking at what different aspect ratios I had. And I found an interesting one, and this is purely because of the director's choice. Now this is La La Land on 4K, and if you look on the back, you've got a 16.9 widescreen presentation. Great, it's not letterbox, it's not 4.3, but it's a 2.55 to 1. So this one kind of falls somewhere in between uh, like a, a typical widescreen anamorphic 
and then your Super Panavision Super Widescreen, which is something like the Hateful Eight. The Hateful Eight, this is a 2.76 to one. That's what they call Super Panavision. It's why if you watch the Hateful Eight, you know, you could have a screen that is this tall and the Hateful Eight is going to take up this much space because it's just, it's super wide and it needs to, it needs to shrink to show you the entire width of that image. So you're going to have very heavy black bars. You're also going to have heavy black bars here, but it's an interesting choice because it's not Super Panavision. It's not 2.4. It's somewhere in between. It's 2.55. And so Damien Chazelle and his cinematography team for this must have found some special kind of camera or liked the way that was shot and went with that aspect ratio. So it's just an interesting decision. It's something you're going to run into as you're looking at movies and buying movies. Just take a quick look at the back. It's always back here in the bottom on most releases, although I noticed in a bunch of Lionsgate releases, they're not including it here anymore. So do your research. Go to Blu-ray.com. They always have up-to-date info on um, aspect ratios. But down here, you're going to get all your information, your audio, your subtitles, and most times this will tell you what your aspect ratio is and what you can expect from this movie. So that way you know when you go to buy The Dark Knight on 4K, you can confirm, okay, 16.9, variable 2.4 to 1 and 1.78 to 1 IMAX sequences. That way you know that there are IMAX sequences included in this movie. You'll notice when you go to buy Avengers Endgame in 4K, it's just going to be presented in the standard format and you're not going to get that extra IMAX information. So you'll notice it has one aspect ratio, not two. Really disappointing stuff from Disney. A lot of people are upset about it because The Dark Knight and other movies like that look fantastic with the variable aspect ratios, but it is what it is. So that gives you a little overview. Hopefully that explains some questions. I'm sure that most of you guys who have been collecting and been into home theater for a long time, messing with projectors and displays. This may be obviously a lot of repeat information. You probably know all of this, but there are a lot of people out there who are just starting to get into collecting, who are just learning about home theater, who are trying to set up their projectors, who are thinking about buying a projector screen because you can buy a 4.3, 16.9, a 21 to nine. I believe you can buy a 16.10 projector screen. There's a lot of different options. And so this will help you sort of understand what those all mean. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you did learn something in this video. Um, like I said, just kind of go through your collection and, and check out some of those aspect ratios. See if you've got any IMAX movies. Those would be really cool to see um, and check out what the aspect ratio is for those. Should be 178 to 1 for a Blu-ray release so it fills your screen, 16.9. But, um, you know, go through and check. Maybe some of them didn't include IMAX scenes, you know, and that's, that's something you need to note when you go to buy a movie. Is it worth purchasing this if it doesn't include IMAX? Is there another way for me to get the IMAX? Maybe you do have to go digital. You know, I don't know the answer to that. It all depends on the movie. But it's just another little interesting thing to put in your pocket and understand about home theater displays and basically the way movies are shot, made, and presented both in theaters and at home on Blu-ray and 4K. Thought it was an interesting topic. Hopefully you guys did too. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe. We just hit 12,000 subscribers, which is an incredible number. I honestly can't believe I'm actually there. I remember being back at one or 2,000 subscribers, looking up at other guys who had 10, 11, 12,000 saying, They've been doing it for seven, eight years. I'm never going to get to that point. It's going to take me a decade. These guys have a head start. They've already beaten me to the game. And here I am and I'm passing some of those people who were inspirations to me to start this channel. It's really incredible. And that's thanks to all you guys who keep coming back, watching these videos and subscribing. Um, also, don't forget to try to support my channel. There are a few ways you can do that. Number one way, follow me on Instagram. That always helps. You learn about new things. You learn about new videos. And it's great. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram. If you want to make a monetary donation, there is a PayPal donation link. You can send me money. Send me $5. It goes right into my pocket. I can go buy a beer. I can go buy a movie. I can go buy some stuff for my camera setup. I can buy stuff to, you know, I can buy a new movie to review. Anything. It helps. There are other ways to help out and donate to the channel passively. One of the great ways to do that is clicking the Amazon links below in my description. There's a 4K and Blu-ray storefront, which I've set up, which has some of my favorites. If you make a purchase through there, I get some money back into my Amazon account, which helps me purchase new things. Also, there are links, affiliate links to my projector, my home theater seats, my uh, shelving, my subwoofer, my speakers, my receiver, 
my projector screen. Everything I have, I put a link to Amazon. First off, to support the great companies which have supported me and promote their products. But also secondly, if you click through those links and make a purchase, it does give me a little bit of money back. And you know, it, it's, it's small dollars, but it all adds up. And there's 12,000 of you guys. And you know, every few months, if I get a little payout, that helps me keep going, it helps me keep, uh, stay motivated, and it helps me you know, continue to provide content and increase what I'm doing, spend more time on this, put more uh, you know, dollars into it. So super helpful. Those are great ways you can support. And other than that, share this video, tell your friends, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram, let people know about the channel. That's always super helpful and I appreciate all the responses and all the support that I get. So without further ado, let's just close this one up. Hopefully you learned something about aspect ratios. Looking forward to getting back into some more 4K reviews very shortly. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.